after Mr. Depp ended things with Ms. Hurd and left the apartment on May 21st, he got on a plane to head out on a European tour, a music tour, for months with his band, The Hollywood Vampires. And Ms. Hurd knew that he was going off on tour and out of state when she walked into court to get the restraining order, which she obtained ex parte. It's a Latin word, fancy word, but all it means is that Mr. Depp and his lawyer were not there and had no opportunity to be heard. You will hear how Mr. Depp came to Los Angeles as a teenager. He first claimed to be a musician, then became an actor, and eventually, thanks to his talent, his dedication, and a lot of hard work, grew into one of the biggest movie stars in the world. You'll hear evidence of drug binges with his good friend Marilyn Manson. And you're going to hear from the experts testifying about this finger injury and how fantastic this version is. But the other part of it was he was with Marilyn Manson for the week before scoring on cocaine. You'll have you'll see text messages of him getting it from his handlers, the, the cocaine and the liquor. And you'll hear it so much before. I'll say, did, did there come a time in 2013 when your brother was working with Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones on a documentary? Yes. yes. Stuff, because he, he had to go pick up some items because he was going to go on tour. The penthouse to pick up some of his stuff uh, because he was going to be leaving, you know, to go on, on tour. Um, and uh, I just stopped by after, after they had just gotten back. So you had referred uh, to your brothers having plans to go on tour and plan for that next week before he was going on tour. He had to get on a plane to go to New York to, you know, to, to meet the band and go on to Europe. What day was Mr. Depp planning to go on tour with his music band? He had to be there Tuesday morning. He so how long was he supposed to be on tour? I, I believe it was a couple of months, something like that. So you had referred uh, to your brothers having plans to go on tour mm -hmm. that next week, obviously not knowing that his mother was going to pass. Right. Getting ready to travel to Europe for the tour. Anytime I felt she needed to speak. Somebody's trying to call us. <laughs> it's kind I, of a pleasant ringtone. I, I didn't answer it, so. <laughs> I don't know. Good morning. Morning. Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name's Isaac Baruch. You know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes. How do you know Mr. Depp? I know him from since teenagers. Uh, we met in Florida. And could you tell the jury a little bit about your experience meeting Mr. Depp when you were teenagers in Florida? Yeah, uh, we were both playing in bands. We had mutual friends and uh, that we met in probably 1980. And uh, yeah, we hit it off, we got along with each other. And uh, yeah. How often did you see Mr. Depp when you were teenagers together in Florida? A few times, uh, a, few times uh, a month, I'd say it could be more, a little more or whatever, because, you know, we'd see each other at parties and clubs, nightclubs where the bands played. Yeah, like that. And for how long were you both um, living in Florida and seeing each other somewhat regularly? Well, we, we met in like 1980, so, uh, and then we both moved away. He moved to California, I moved to New York. What was that, 80? From 80 to 83, that, what's that, like four years? What were your impressions of Mr. Depp while you were um, both living in Florida at the same time? Oh, he's a, he's a sweet kid. He's, he's, he's a sweet guy. guy. Sir, sir, wait, there's an objection. Oh. Thank you. What his impressions were back then? Oh, what's the relevance? Just establishing the background and the right. relationship, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question, please. All right. Um, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when Mr. Depp uh, moved away from Florida? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus... My friend, who I, who I'm talking about, who, whose girlfriend lived in the same building, he was playing in a band, 
and they needed another guitar player, and Johnny ended up joining the band, so we were hanging out a lot more often. Um, what were you doing when you moved out to California? I was pursuing music also, working retail jobs and trying to get a band, make a band. What were you doing for you know? Mr. Depp when you started working for him in 1993? Well, he owned a place called the Viper Room, and uh, which is a music venue, a nightclub, bar, and bands play. And uh, it was already open for six months. And uh, the girl who was working, the, the person who was working the, as office manager didn't want to work there anymore. So the guy who was running the place for Johnny, who's a, a friend named Sal Jenko, another Florida friend from back in 1980, at some point in time, did you stop working at the Viper Room for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah. When was that? Well, I worked from 93 to 98. And at some point? Yes, I did. When was that? I moved back uh, December of 2002. What did you do um, for work when you returned to L.A.? Well, I, for two weeks, I worked at an art gallery, and then I uh, went back to the Viper Room on New Year's Eve. How long were you working at the Viper Room at that point in time? It was another year, and then the place changed hands. Well, working at, working at the Viper Room, taking classes, and then at, uh, uh, at one point, the club changed hands completely after a year, 2004. Uh, Johnny, out of his pocket, was going to give a severance pay to whoever didn't want to work there uh, anymore. So I took the severance six, pay. Six. That's okay. Six, six, six. Good morning. All right. The first thing I want to say is I get a call from my mother last night and my mother-in-law saying, why did you have your phone on the bench? So I want to clear everything up. That was not my phone. That was a call through the computer system because I guess we have an open line for remote witnesses, so that it came through the computer system. Jamie says it's never happened before. But it came through the computer system and she hung up on it. So just for the record, that was not my phone. Okay? So I don't need that kind of grief from my mother, all right? Come on. Okay. Thank you. It was boring and they were all old men playing guitars and it wasn't interesting to her. Whenever they were in each other's presence, oh, okay. countless times, and he would, he would even teach him how to play guitar. <laughs> yeah, he gave my son a, a little um, pick as well, a guitar pick, which he cherishes to this day as well. Fair to say you were around Mr. Jack. Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, it's usually like... A you know, kind of a celebratory event, like after a gig or the, a party or something. Um, the patient stated he'd been texting his friend explaining why he didn't show up to play music and fiance got upset that he was not giving her enough support and the fight escalated to what there. Mr. Depp was doing with Marilyn Manson. I do Did you ever tell Dr. Kipper that Mr. Depp was doing what he wants with, with Marilyn Manson? I don't recall. Do you recall Marilyn Manson being in Australia with Mr. Depp? I do not. Now, in the subsection that says 2330, uh, um, do you see where it says accompanied patient, fiance, assistance, and security to concert? Yes. Okay. And in this note, patient refers to Mr. Depp. Is that right? Yes. And fiance is Ms. Heard? Okay, do you see where it says, received text from patient's sister that patient had been recording music with his friend until five and did not go to sleep until seven and is currently sleeping. I went to his, um, one of his Hollywood vampire show out here in the desert. Did Mr. Depp ever use an earpiece for some other purpose other than listening uh, to Mr. Brando's dialogue? After that, we started using an earpiece all the time um, where Johnny would listen to music while acting. Um, 
we would play all different kinds of music depending on the character he was uh, he was playing. He and I would talk about it beforehand, and you know, sometimes it'd be classical, sometimes it'd be rock, sometimes it would be blues. It depended on the character. Well, I would remind him in his ear sometimes while while music was playing at the his same earpiece? time. Is yes. that correct? Okay. So it could be music, it can be lines. Do you recall him going on a binge with Marilyn Manson for a few days? Objection, no, lack of foundation. Do, do you, you don't I'll recall lie. that? I'm sorry? Do you recall? No, I don't recall. You don't recall one way or the other, or you just... No, I, d I didn't visit Johnny when we were in Australia. So I don't know. Okay, so you he don't He had know. a house, I had a condominium in town. So, so you don't know what was causing Johnny to be late or whether he was taking a lot of alcohol and drugs. Was no, that fair to say? over yes. for something or other, or, you know, uh, Johnny and I may have been recording some music or something, and she was there. Uh, she left for, I, I was 15. I had, I had already uh, left school, and I was a musician. I was playing in clubs, and so it was as if she, were, it was, she was too good to be true. Um, she was attentive, she was loving, um, she was smart, she was kind, she was funny, she was understanding, she, um, and, and we, we, we had many things in common, certain blues music and, well, music literature things of that nature so I ended up acting by accident I uh, was a musician and I'd moved out to Los Angeles with my band uh, when I was 20 years old um, and then there were a couple of uh, things that happened in the band where the band split up and uh, I remember I was filling out job applications and then Nick, uh, uh, with a friend of mine and who happens to be, he happened, he was an actor, uh, less known then than he is now, Nicholas Cage. Um, and I was filling out job applications at any, you know, video stores, clothing stores, anything, you know, just to be able to pay the rent. And, um, Nick Cage said, uh, you know, why, why don't you meet my agent, you know? Uh, cause I, I, I think you're an actor. I think you could be an actor. And I said, look, I, I'll meet anybody, you know, I'll do anything at this point. And so he sent me to his, his agent, Eileen Feldman, and I met with her. Um, she sent me to read for a, uh, a casting director named Annette Benson, who was casting a film called The Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and, uh, they brought me back to read for the director, Wes Craven, and, um, I read for Wes, uh, Craven and somehow got the job, but I mean, I was by no means an actor. I didn't have any desire to be an actor. I was a musician, uh, but the fact that these People were going to pay me what I found to be a ludicrous sum of money, which was uh, it was kind of the SAG minimum. Uh, it was twelve hundred and eighty-four dollars a week, which I, I mean, you know, I'd never seen that kind of dough before in my life. Um, and so. I, I suddenly, you know, and then I did some other couple of dumb movies because I, I, I still, in my mind, I was a musician and this was just a way to uh, pay the rent, pay the bills, live. Um, then suddenly I found myself on that road. I had been placed on that road uh, as, a, as an actor and, and then I one thing led to another from film to film and then I uh, was cast in a TV series called 21 Jump Street. It was foreign to me. It was foreign to me but I, I didn't I, di I didn't have any great um, 
ambition to be an actor. I, I'm a, a naturally, normally, I'm, I'm uh, I've always been quite a shy person. I've always been quite introverted. And so there was a very strange metamorphosis from being one of four, that is to say, one of four in a band where you have this fraternity or this brotherhood um, and you're out there fighting the world together to try to get that record deal or whatever you're looking for. And uh, when the, when, when, when I got on this series and my life started to change in various ways, that is to say that people started to, you know, you go into a restaurant and you'd see people whispering and pointing and all that. I, I was, uh, I was very uncomfortable with it. I was very uncomfortable with it and I didn't like it. Um, just, just because it, I, I, I never wanted to be the lead singer and the guy out front and uh, we'll, we'll get all the attention and I, I didn't, so suddenly I was on my own and I was, uh, having to deal with this, uh, this, this, this newfound sort of notoriety. And it was, it was odd. It was very odd and it was, yeah, it was a very uncomfortable thing. I, I mean, it, I don't think it's anything that one can get used to. I don't, I, I wouldn't, I'm not, I'm still not used to it now. And I, which I'm actually glad that I'm not used to it. Because if I were, uh, I don't think I'd be the same person that I am. Once I realized that, I, that that's the road that I was on, and that any attempt at going back to music would, would be a, um, a, a, non, a, a not, it would have been, I hated the idea that since the television series had come out and I had been exposed as this 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 character or this actor, uh, um, I had to realize in in my own mind and heart that there was no going back to music because I I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to use whatever amount of success that I had um, attained from the TV series and that sort of thing, I didn't want to use that to influence, um, you, you know, some career in music. I, I, I had far too much respect for uh, music. Um, than to just uh, become what they wanted me to become, which was a you know, teen idol or a teeny you know that that's that sort of thing. I um, I fought that with uh, with everything in my being. So once I realized that music was no longer uh, an option, then um, I began to uh, study. Um, at various places, you know, the Loft Studio, which is now long gone, um, all over the world, uh, everywhere, Los Angeles, J Japan, um, Serbia, um, you know, films, tour, um, Malcolm was my, uh, he, you know, he, 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 when we were on the Vampires tour in Europe, throughout Europe, and Malcolm was on the bus with me. We, we lived on the bus together, basically. Mr. Jeff, other than acting, what other artistic pursuits do you have that may be a little less known to the general public? Well, I've remained uh, a, a musician. I've been a musician. Um, I started playing the guitar when I was 12 years old, and uh, that saved my life because I locked myself into a in my bedroom 
um, at the age of 12, uh, listening to, you know, records, moving the needle back and then learning that piece and then learning it again. So, uh, so much so, to, I mean, that I, 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 I don't remember, uh, I, I, I have no memory of going through puberty. I, 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 uh, I was just playing the guitar. I was just, I was obsessed with uh, my guitar. I would have a, um, I, I need to create. It's, it, it's a need. It's a, of course I want to create as well, but I, I, I actually need to create because I need to summon whatever whatever it is that I need to summon to whether and whether that's within a film or a, a painting or a guitar note um, all of those things sh should come from a place uh, of, of the, an organic place a place of truth um, because if they don't Well, then you're just lying. I, 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 every bit of truth, the person doesn't have to say anything on film. Um, what's important is what's behind the eyes. And if they do say something, what's important is not necessarily the words that they say. It's very easy to say, I love you, but what brings it into the realm of truth is what's underneath it, what's not being said, the subtext, if you will. So um, any artistic or creative venture, any film, anything that I do, that's, um, that's where I'm coming from. That's, that's my approach. Can you please tell the jury a little bit about how you write? I, I, certainly. I, um, when I was young, when I was about 12 years old, my, my elder brother, um, Danny, um, walked into my room and ripped the Peter Frampton record off my record player, threw it across the room, and said, you gotta stop listening to this stuff. And he put this record on, and it started. And I'd never heard anything like it. It was called uh, Astral Weeks by Van Morrison. So I'm a kid, you know, 12 years old. So my brother turned me on to Van Morrison, and then he turned me on to soundtracks like Clockwork Orange or uh, um, um, Last Tango in Paris. So that day after work, this uh, had come to my trailer, and I was uh, uh, I was I was uh, I was just sitting there listening to uh, actually old blues stuff, and uh, we had a glass of wine and. to be the perfect uh, partner in, in a sense in my head and for me because she as I said she she was she seemed to be very knowledgeable about old obscure blues music that I listened to and really liked as Ms. Heard was she was leaving the following day for uh, Coachella, which is a, a, a it's a Coachella is like a, it's a big event, a concert, you know, many, many bands and, um, yeah, out in the desert, she, she, she and her friends were going to Coachella for the weekend and, um, that was it. I had gone to Mr. Bet and said, uh, 
she's in Coachella, she's at Coachella. I think it's a good time to go downtown so that I can get some of my things, you know, and uh, get them out of there, especially the things that were uh, uh, precious to me, you know, children things, things from friends, Brando, Hunter, Thompson, whatever, things that were important to me. And he said, I don't think now's a good time to go. And I thought, it's the perfect time. She's not going to be home for two days. And then he showed me a photograph on his telephone of... Uh... Objection, Your Honor. Calls for it's, it's a photograph, Your Honor. As being relayed to him by Mr. Beck. He, he says he looked at it on his, on his phone. I'll rule the objection as the photograph. What was the photograph of Mr. Depp? It was a, it was a, it was a photograph of the bed, our bed, um, and on my side of the bed, um, was human fecal matter. And what were some of those things that your mother's death opened your eyes to? That life is a bird song. That that what feels like a hundred years is in fact a second, millisecond. Nobody can count those things. You know, so inside of the couch, I was sitting on the other. She, that's when she was trying to explain a few things about Coachella and then the fe fecal uh, delivery um, and say, saying that it was the dogs. And I, I could, I'm sorry, I could not agree with her. I lived with those dogs. I picked up their fun. It was not, I had to catch a flight to New York um, where we were doing, uh, the, I was, this group, the Hollywood Vampires, <clears throat> we were we were about to set out on a two or three month tour of Europe, and we, we were rehearsing in New York, and then we played one show in New York as a, as a warm-up gig, and then we were on the plane, and we were, uh, we started the, the shows in, in um, in Europe, and I was on the road from then, which was May, on t through July, uh, August or something. Eve was on the twenty third, and I had already left town for New York to prepare for the tour. Did Miss Heard know that you were out of town at that time? I don't know. <clears throat> when did you learn that Miss Heard had made domestic abuse allegations against you? Um, the 27th of May which is, in fact, my daughter's birthday. Um, I saw that she had gone to a court, it was, I don't know, some court, and there were paparazzi everywhere, and her and a um, <clears throat> brown mark on her face. Um, and it also happened to be the day that Charlie and the no, Alice in Wonderland 2, um, so the looking glass was opening, and that's the day that she chose to uh, uh, get the, uh, go, go to the courthouse and get a TRO, a uh, temporary restraining order against me. But I was in Europe already at that Refresh your recollection that Miss Heard knew that you were in New York on this date? Um... In her 
text, you know, when do you leave? Um, what was clear that I was leaving um, right away, but uh, I, I, I'm not sure that I wasn't already, because I wasn't in New York City. We weren't playing New York City. I, we were we were playing. Uh, we were rehearsing in a um, like a casino, a, a big casino, and that was where we did our first uh, show um, to pra to you know first show to practice for the the uh, the tour the uh, European tour. So I don't know if I was either leaving for New York, but I don't, I think I was already there because New York City, uh, we weren't, uh, I don't recall that we were playing New York City. So maybe I was su suggesting going, going there. I don't recall if we had left for Europe as yet. Um, that is the Hollywood Vampires for the tour. So I was either um, in New York State rehearsing and uh, preparing to go to Europe, or I was already in Europe. I'd have to check the <clears throat> the, the right. tour dates. It was released right when it came out. Did you speak to anyone about this article? Yes, I did. Who did you speak to? Mostly friends and my sister Christy. Mostly friends um, and certainly The band, um, from the moment that I woke up until the moment that I dropped, even on the road playing shows, you'd go out and you'd play for an hour and a half or two hours, and you'd do your best to get through that. And I, I can remember getting off of the, uh, finishing the show getting on the bus with the other band members and just going to the back of the bus and uh, just, 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 you know, you had to get it out. So I just sat back and in the back of the bus and uh, cried and hid it from people. Yeah, just friends, you know, uh, I, I, and, and then of course, as we were on the road, I, you know, the, the, the fellows in the band, you know, Alice, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Alice Cooper is the singer of the vampires, who's a dear friend, and um, Joe Perry from Aerosmith is in the band, and he's also a dear friend. And then the, um, a couple of the other members are just, are just yeah, f very close friends. And uh, you're, you're not aware of if or when Pirate Six will be made, correct? Uh, no, sir. I, I, and, I, I, no. and the fact is, Mr. Depp, if Disney came to you with three hundred million dollars and a million alpacas, nothing on this earth would get you to go back and work with Disney on a Pirates of the Caribbean film. Correct? That is true, Mr. Robinson. Two texts Robinson. down, please, Michelle. And this is a text that you sent on June 8, 2014, just scroll over, to Patty Smith. You see that? Yes, I do. Okay. And in this text, I, I, I won't read all of it, but you say this, my dar I'm gonna just read the first paragraph. My darling Patty Lee, I miss you 
and worship you and there's nothing wrong between us. Never ever could that happen. I've just been so beyond busy with film here in Boston and then back to LA for kiddies. When I was in NYC, they were brief visits and fucked and charged by horrific fights with Amber. I fucked up and drank and got shitty. Was so disappointed in myself. Actually, almost walked to your place at about 3.30 a.m. the last time I was there, unable to stop he tears. Did I read that right? You did. So, monster uh, was something that if, if which she s stuck with tried and true, I mean, she just stayed with that. Right, but, um, but you, but, have but to you, it came from it you. The term unless came you from wanted you. to argue. The term came from you, didn't it? Uh, it's very probable. It's possible. It's probable that I that I might have used that 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 word certainly. Right, and and, and in 2012, in fact, um, Elton John was one of your friends who was trying to help you get sober. Correct. Yes, sir. And you 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 sent him a message in 2012, where you thanked him for his help, and you said, "quote I would have been swallowed up by the monster were it not for you." That is a simple fact. Isn't yes. that true? Yes. Again, the monster referring to alcohol and, and substances. Correct. And, and you didn't send that message to Miss Heard. You sent that to Elton John. I would have been swallowed up by the monster were it not for you. Um, Correct? Elton. Elton. Uh, Can you pull up these? Was, it, wait, was a dear friend who... Um, has been uh, s s sober for I don't know, 40 years, 30 years. So he was, um, we've had discussions and he wanted to me to get uh, clean, sober. Um, so he actually, Elton actually sent uh, a, a, a fellow called Charlie Dunnett, who, who worked with Elton for years and years. And Mr. Depp, I, I appreciate that. My only question was just to confirm that you had sent that message to Elton John, nothing else. Thank you. So I'll just, okay, I'll yeah. just stop talking. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I want to be respectful of the court's problem, time and the, and the jury's time. Um, Sorry? I just said I want to be respectful of the court's time and the jury's time, and I, I trust that you do too. So, um, well, I don't feel you, like I'm wasting anyone's time, sir. Could you pull up Exhibit 408, please? And um, one, of, one of your good friends that you've taken drugs with before is Marilyn Manson, right? Um, yes, we've taken, uh, 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 we drank together. Uh, we, we've, uh, we, we've had cocaine together maybe a couple of times. Um, pills, right? With Marilyn Manson? Um, I once gave uh, Marilyn Manson a pill uh, so that he would s stop talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, I get it. And on the morning that this picture was taken, you were... This was during the filming of a documentary about Keith Richards. You remember that? Um, uh, what, what, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Th this, uh, yeah, sure. This picture was taken while you were filming a documentary about Keith Richards, correct? Uh, I'm sorry, the date again on this? Do you remember that? I believe, it was, I believe it was March 2013. You, could, you that should seems, know better yes, than I that do. That seems about... Okay. And you um, see there's a Keith Richards CD looks like above that cosmetic case perfectly placed yes. yeah and you had an argument that morning in which you accused amber of cheating on you do you remember that um i believe amber had an argument with me and morning. you were using cocaine and drinking whiskey that morning and as a result of that argument you were late to the set of that documentary correct um in fact i was not late to the documentary uh well i was late but um i had called uh my crew because it was a day of uh, filming performance with, between it was Keith Richards, Tom Waits, and some other very uh, talented musicians, 
uh, the only thing that needed to be done in terms of performance was capture the performance. So uh, my, I, I wasn't needed on the set, so I could come in anytime I wanted. Okay, you, you just said that you were late though, correct? Oh, so I was just late, yes. Okay. yes, yes. All right. And, and due to the argument, of course. Sure. Yes. Um, I'd like to, to shift gears a little bit uh, now. Mm. Well, actually, let's let's not. Um, this is a text, um, Mr. Depp, uh, where you say, I use marijuana a lot, three exclamation points. I take pot. I read that right, correct? Yes, you did. And, and this is a text that you sent on September 11th, 2012, to just scroll over to the left, Michelle. This is a text that you sent to Brian Warner. Um, Brian Warner's Marilyn Manson, right? That's correct, sir. Okay. Um, let's pull up Exhibit 145, please. Thanks, Michelle. That's fine. No okay. objection. All right, 145 and evidence has redacted. Thank you, Your Honor. So this text exchange, Mr. Depp, between you and Marilyn Manson on uh, September 11th, 2012, you text him, the pill and the plant stuff keep me calm and detached. And he texts you back, I have lots of reapers many reapers and cookies which are weird but pot is funny backwards gateway drug see that i do sir did i read that right you did <clears throat> 1089 Mr. Depp, I'd, I'd like to ask you about this photo. Um, this is a photo of four pretty huge bags of marijuana, correct? Yes, sir, that is a lot of marijuana. A lot of marijuana. Yes, sir. Um, and the coffee cup that's right next to that, that's that's a coffee cup for your, your company, Infinitum Nile, right? That's correct. And the, the furniture, this is taken in one of your residences? Uh, it's taken in the studio, the recording studio. In the recording studio, okay. Um, your Honor, uh, move for the admission of Exhibit 1089, Defendant's Exhibit 1089, and no. permission to publish. No objection. All right, 1089 evidence. And publish. So this is this is an email that you sent to Elton John, July 13th, 2013. And Michelle, could you scroll down to the third paragraph up from the bottom that starts with the words, on the other side of the coin? And in that paragraph, you write, on the other side of the coin, Mr. Depp, is this uh, an email exchange you had with Bruce Whitkin um, on June 6th, June 7th, 2013? It's June 7th, 2013. Okay. And um, if you scroll down to the bottom, th th that... That I'm not going to read it aloud, but that email address is your email address. Is that right? Uh, the, I don't. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, <coughs> thank you. Um, so this email is an email that you sent to, to Mr. Whitkin on um, June 6, 2013 at 7.05 a.m., the one that starts with seriously be woozy. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And Bruce Whitkin was a longtime friend of yours, right? Yes, sir. Quite a long time. You met in Florida many years ago, right? Yes. And then he you, he lived in Los Angeles, and you all were, were very close friends until a few years ago, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, Your Honor, permission to, to um, publish or pr move for admission of this and permission to publish uh, with the email addresses redacted. And if they want me to redact Mr. Witkin's responses, that's fine. 
We have no objection to that, Your Honor, and I don't think we need to have Mr. Lurkin's response redacted. All right, so you just want to have um, just the identifiers redacted and that's all? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, if we could do that. Okay, now I know this is a few years before uh, Australia um, in 2015, which we, we stopped with right before lunch. Um, but I want to just, if you can scroll down, um, Michelle, please, to the paragraph that starts, brain is on full tilt. Maybe just blow up the first couple sentences there. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, so in this email to Mr. Whitkin in June of 2013, you write to him, brain is on full tilt. The circus never stops. Feel physically fucked constantly. I'm wired up so tight that I'm barely able to deal with people on any level that is remotely enjoyable. See that? Did I read that right? Yes, I see. Yeah. Now, Michelle, can you please pull up? Exhibit? Um, and in fact, Mr. Depp, um, you you also were going to see Marilyn Manson uh, in Australia around this time, correct? Correct, he was coming to play a, a show in Melbourne. Okay. Um, you text uh, Mr. Holmes, your personal assistant, have you heard from Manson's Ryan? Now, Ryan was M M Marilyn Manson's personal assistant, or, or he worked for him. That's what you understood, correct? At the time, yes. Okay. And then you say, yes and yes and of course. Yes, please, and you will pay Ryan for it. Two exclamation points, two question marks. And then you write, disappear, we should have more happy pills. Three exclamation points, two question marks, can you, followed by three exclamation points. Did I read that correctly? Uh, Mr. Duter's an email, and if you'll remember, what we had just looked at was you reaching out to Mr. Holmes, asking if he had heard from Manson's assistant, Ryan, and then saying yes and yes and yes, of course, please pay Ryan for it, and then asking for more happy pills. And in this text message, you say, yay, hello, Master D. I say, I do believe that Ryan, parentheses, Munson's, gave you a wee baggage for me. Where does it reside? X. Did I read that right? You continue to read them right, yes. And the, the where it says Munson's, that's a typo and should have said Manson's, correct? Uh, it's a nickname. Okay. Um, you can take that luck. down. You will. And thanks for the tunes. Bye. James. <laughs> Is that Ryan Adams, the singer? Uh, yes, it is. Um, Your Honor, move for uh, admission of defendants exhibit 330. Um, just plan on asking about that text. Uh, objection relevance, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, I, the, if we, I'm happy yeah, to approach if you want. Okay. Pull up exhibit 620, please. Tell Dr. Kipper, I cut the top of my middle finger off in this text, correct? It's just the way it was worded. It doesn't mean that 
I actually literally cut my finger off after, at the age of 12, finding the only thing that gave me uh, peace, which is playing the guitar. Very unlikely. Why didn't I start lopping off digits when I was uh, 13? Then? Just the way it was worded. Now, m Mr. Yeah. June 21st, 2018, six months before the op-ed was published, mm -hmm. a Rolling Stone article entitled The Trouble with Johnny Depp, multi-million dollar lawsuits, a haze of booze and hash, a marriage gone very wrong, and a lifestyle he can't afford inside the trials of Johnny Depp. Did I read that right? You did. You should read the article. It's and the wonderful. last one, the last one, June 22nd, 2018, the Daily Mail, vodka for breakfast, 72-hour drug binges, and spending... That was her go-to, the monster. The monster's here. The monster's back. The monster. Um, so I would refer to the monster again in terms of... So with, 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 uh, Elton, or with friends Patty Smith, uh, the monster was uh, like with Elton. I think it was just the monster was I, I, you know, I let the monster creep back in or something. That is sobriety. That's that's what I'm telling him is I have I have failed, um, and I and I've had a drink or a been drinking but my drinking again was not to excess there was no I would never went into blackouts or anything of that nature I was disappointed in myself uh, for not not staying there although red the lipstick um, that says call Carly Simon but the call Carly Simon she said it better babe um, in reference to you're so vain, I am imagining. But that's not, I didn't, uh, the Carly Simon message is not mine. That's Miss Heard. That's in red here that says Carly Simon said it. Call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe. Is that right? Yes, no, I, that's, that's not mine. Um, how do you know that it was Miss Heard that wrote that? Objection, lack of foundation. A rule though. You can't there are um it's well first it doesn't it looks like it's trying to match my handwriting but my handwriting is, is a lot more uh, of a scribble um, and also there's another photograph of this where she went in to make sure that there were uh, that the red um, was more prominent. Um, I believe there's also a napkin down there where Objection, someone. Your Honor, lack what, of foundation. He's referring to exhibits that are, aren't in evidence and all right, I'll have no I'll, idea whether they even exist. I'll sustain the objection now. Next question. Was do you recall whether the lipstick writing was on the mirror when you wrote in the the black? Paint. No, of course not. No. That's that's not. I mean, when you say I got my finger cut off, or I cut my finger off, or this or that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you did it yourself. And again. I'm a guitarist and have been since I was 12, and that was the only piece that I found in my life at the age of 12 where I knew what I, I knew who I could, that I could escape into music and learn music. And the last thing, I'm a guitar, I mean, I, st I still play the guitar with, with, it's still my first love, aside from my children, it's still my first love. There's no reason in the world why I, 
literally we cut my own finger off to ruin this this beautiful opportunity that I was given at 12 to learn how to play the guitar. Um, and, 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 and again, wh why would I start lopping off digits at, in my 50s? If I, if I um, as Mr. Rottenbullen suggests, am a, am a kind of, you know, a walking tantrum, um, when I was younger, I, uh, wh why wouldn't I just start chopping off fingers and, or, 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 or some kind of, why would I ruin the only thing that was really good in my life aside from my children? So when this finger went, the tip of this finger went, um, the only thing I could think in my mind was, thank God it wasn't the left hand, which is the fret hand. I'm right-handed, so that's the fret, that's where the fretboard is. If you lose a finger from your left hand, you know, I'm not Django Reinhardt who had only two fingers to play with. Um, if I'd have lost a finger from here, uh, I would have had to relearn how to play the guitar all over again. Um, it, 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 it's just not the case. Even though I say I've chopped my finger off, it, it's like saying, you know, I, 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 I bumped into a knife uh, or something, you know. It's, it's, it's not, I'm not admitting to, I think if I was going to admit to someone that I, actually chopped my finger off this text wouldn't be as it is i think it would have been a long explanation as to why i got to that point but uh no i can't take responsibility for what i now call little richard my chopped finger uh mr Depp